Okay, we are gonna work through Workout Wednesday. This is a Power BI weekly challenge that Spencer's been putting together. They've long done Tableau challenges, but the Power BI challenge is new. Um, we, I did week one last week as um, a massive Twitter thread, but we'll do it today as a, a two Alex hyphen one Alex video. Uh, this will be our first pre-recorded video on one Alex, assuming that I actually publish it. We shall see. Um, there's going to be no editing. We're just going to work through this start to finish. Uh, I've read the challenge, but I haven't worked on it at all. Um, except, of course, that we're going to start with the data model we created last week, which I already did. So um, that's where we'll start. And we're going to try and create uh, a report that accomplishes the same thing this does. We'll see. We may or may not try and make it look fancier. Um, but we're certainly going to talk about some of the, some diff, we're going to start by doing exactly what he says in these step-by-step -step directions, but then from there, we are going to make some changes to make the model a little bit better. And then, um, from there, we will, um, talk about get into the visuals. So let's jump right into it. I am going to grab last week's model from my GitHub uh, and I'm going to take this over here and here is last week's model. So if you saw my Twitter thread, we went sort of above and beyond on f making the model nice and fancy. Um, and we won't go in quite as far above and beyond this week, but we are going to do some things. So the first step, he says, is to use Power Query to create a new field in M called Total Profits. This is calculated by subtracting total expenses from revenue and then adding back in excess transfers. So let's do that real quick. Um, and so uh, what we want to do is come to our fact table. And um, there's a couple approaches that we could take to creating this. We could just start typing. We could um, add a column using some of our math functions and use multiple steps, or we could create a custom function, which is what we're gonna do. Uh, this is going to be total profits, and we can calculate it as total revenues minus total expenses and uh, I'm going to put all of our positive terms first because it makes it a little easier I think to read so we're going to find excess transfers back and we're done that's that's it that's all we have to do I mean we have to do our data types and we could go ahead and load this column in and it would work just fine. Now, we're seeing a little bit of a problem that most of them are coming up as blank. So let's look into what the issue there is. Um, so, uh, it's coming out as blank when the excess transfers back is null. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. We could do that by filling these zeros, but generally speaking, it's best practice to leave um, rows blank where there's actually no value not to fill zeros um and so we don't want to do that uh, and this is a good pivot into um why this is not the right approach and it's, it's actually not really this result that's not why this is not good practice but it's another factor weighing in why we want to do this um which is, generally speaking, what we don't want to do is have multiple columns that, so like, if we have revenue, expenses, profits, uh, losses, like, we can calculate these things from each other just by adding them together and subtracting them. We generally don't want to have the same call, the same information presented in multiple ways in our model. Sometimes it'll be a good idea 
for performance reasons, but as we'll see as we get into this, it really, this is a case, because we're just adding stuff together, which is sort of Vertipak's bread and butter, there's really no benefit at all uh, to making this pre-calculated column, and actually a measure is much better suited for this. I'm going to load it anyway, because later I'm hoping that we're going to see some performance tests. So um, what we want to do is add um, uh, a replace values as part of the function. Now, um, so what we'll do is, does this give us IntelliSense? Um, yeah, uh, what we want to do is do replace value from total expenses, comma, null, null, comma, zero. And I think that will work. Uh, it looks like IntelliSense likes it. So now, um, hmm. So did I get that wrong? Uh, I did it to total expenses, and the problem, the place that we're running into problems is not total expenses, but total transfers back. So, we'll go ahead and do this, and go ahead and evaluate that. And now everything shakes out correctly, we do our conversions, um, and we can go ahead and load this to the model. Um, and the next step is um, to create a dashboard that includes three high-level me measures. So create three high-level measures, total revenues, total expenses, and total profits. Uh, we actually did that as part of last week. We scripted it out using Power Query, so we just created a basic sum measure for every single uh, one of our fact columns. Um, and so all we have to do is create a new one for total profits. So to recap what we did last time with total profits, um, or with all the other fat columns, now we have a new one, is they should be hidden. They should be organized into our fact columns uh, display folder up here, just like everything else, because the users should only be using the measures except in exceptional circumstances and um we'll format it with zero decimal places because uh the cents here are insignificant uh and finally well i guess it doesn't really matter on the fact column so the measure matters the final thing we want to do is we want to turn off default summarization uh because uh and actually we did it at the model level it doesn't appear to have applied to these, but we want to turn off default summarization um, for all of these columns. So let's let's get that done. I don't know why I didn't take before. Um, there we go. Because we don't want users using these columns to do their additions. They should be using the measures. And in fact, if they connect using Excel, they won't be able to drag in those columns at all. Uh, so we already have. Let's switch over to the table view so we can see the DAX. Uh, so we already have the sum of total revenue. Um, and I don't like being, like verbose column names are good, but like we don't want to be ex too explicit. So we're going to use total revenue, total expenses, um, and And for some reason, I feel like revenue should be singular, um, and expenses plural. But we already have a column called expense, total expenses, so we can't reuse that name. So revenue, total revenue, total expense, eh, it's not great. The other thing that I would recommend doing is in this measure is just making expenses negative so that the report renders correctly. I don't necessarily want to do that in the model. You can, 
Um, but now we'll definitely get the nice good size. Um, and then transfers back are added to profit, so that's uh, positive. Now again, I don't think the sum of is strictly necessary. Um, if it was potentially ambiguous, I'd put it back here um, as an indicator. But generally speaking, when someone's reading the report, they want to know like the more important information first and the details second. Um, so we'll go ahead and um, and again. Um, we have a column named this. Uh, so, um, let's come back and instead of compromising on our column names, on our measure names, let's, uh, let's rename these columns. So, let's rename this to total expense C. Just to see for column, nobody should be using these, so being a little uh, jargony is fine. And excess transfers back. Let's see, we could we could write a Power Query step to do all of these columns programmatically, but um, we don't have to. And then we'd have to redo. When we do it here, it automatically updates the Power Query, and it automatically updates the measure references. If I were to go into Power Query and change all these column names there. All these measures would break, and we'd have to go back and rescript them out, which is sort of out of scope for today. Uh, so now we have total expense. We can go back to our what we feel is the correct plural uh, tense or pluralization, and then we have our excess transfers back here, and so we can clean these up and have this. Um, and so now we have our three measures that we're using today um, ready to go. And then we need total profits based on our new column. So we measure uh, total profits equals, uh, we'll do total profit uh, sum of, Finance is fact, total profits, there we go, and um, now we have our last measure. Oh, I put this in the wrong table, we can just change that. This, and um, we want to set this to zero decimal places, We've got zero decimal places here. This one's already set to zero plus. It looks weird because we we actually did that in tabular editor as part of the scripting, but we can set this to zero here the same way. Um, so that is the measures that we need. Um, and there's one other version of this measure, which is. Um, we can calculate total profit instead of doing it in the model like I referenced before. Let's make a total profit v2. And this equals uh, total revenue plus total uh, excess transfers back plus total expenses. And we did the sign in our measure, so we don't need to do the sign in here. Um, and we'll, once we get our visual built, we'll do a little bit of performance testing to show that there's no benefit to explicitly building the column. Uh, so now let's um, try and replicate the thing. So it wants to do a KPI dashboard that has three high level matters, revenue, total profit, or revenue, expenses, and profits, a trend line, and a breakdown by conference. Include that, th indicate that this view is the summary view within the header. Colors and design of the header section is at your discretion. Great. So there's a couple approaches that we can take to design. Um, what I usually do 
and I rarely design dashboards, is um, there's a couple approaches. Um, but one of the things that I like is to steal someone else's uh, designs. And um, there's a nice ba gallery background that has some designs. And this setup here, it looks like it could be a good fit for our report. Um, let's just look and see if there are others that we like. I usually tend to prefer simpler ones. Um, if we're gonna do the three column layout, uh, this might be better. It's a little busy though. Um, let's just get this, start here, get into PowerPoint, and um, is it the classroom theme? Or, I don't know, he's doing top down. So let's download this. And uh, let's open up PowerPoint. So Chris um, likes to do uh, his backgrounds in PowerPoint. So that's what we're going to, and that's a really good approach. So he's got all these elements locked in. Uh, and so we can make some edits. So, um, first of all, we've got our, oh, it's locked because we downloaded it from the web. So up here, uh, what we want to do is we want to do, uh, this is, what is that? I don't know. Oh, it was a object that he was using as a divider. That is a good approach. Uh, and then we want to have this be called summary view. Okay. And then we've got these guys up at the top. I don't think, oh, that was like a light effect. Yeah, we're not going to keep that, I don't think. I think... Um, I think we're going to do this, um, and then our charts can go up on this dark background. So we want to get these nicely aligned here. Would we rather try to line up? No, I think this is good, or maybe, like, yeah, that's good. I like that. Uh, let's just peek back and see how he had it before. So this is with the blue. So we could also potentially overlap a little bit. That could be good. And then maybe we want to... Um, extend these down. So here's where things could get potentially rough. If we extend this down to here, the curvature changes and matching that curvature is going to be tough. So I don't know, does this shape have variable curvature? Um. Let's see. I don't think, I mean, it must. Let's, I guess it sort of depends on what shape object it is. But I, I guess this has a full width curvature, so it's not actually the shape that I want, which is that what we really just want is another rectangle. So let's let's actually delete this. Make another rectangle that we are going to um, let's do fill eyedropper. Um, let's let me do Format Painter to get everything in place, yep. And then let's, we can tuck this in as we want. 
and um, change shape. This one has curves on the bottom. We just want curves on the top. Uh, no, that's not quite what Ugh, these are so small. And zooming doesn't help for me. I guess I can use zoom in for me, not just for you. Uh, and there we go. Now we've got a nice shape. Oh, but we've got separate controls for the top and bottom. Maybe those were there all along and I just didn't notice them. But now that can be a nice place to put a header. So now let's kill zoom it. That's making my computer lag. Let's control four. Um, and then So we just extended this a little bit. Before there was like a shadow effect that made it float under, but that's not really what we're doing here. So do group these here. Here, what we really want to do is lock this spacing in. And then we can use a range. Nope. Um, distribute horizontally to get that locked in. I think this is going to be good. Other than the height of this, this transition just looks really bad. So let's let's zoom way in on that and see if we can make it better. Maybe. So I feel like we can either have it here. No, I feel like it needs to like obviously not be lined up one way or the other. Okay. So then we can do arrange on the line top, arrange. Oh, did I get this far enough over? No. Now we can distribute this like that. Okay. And then uh, one of the things Chris uh, talks about is that if we, the fewer objects that we have in Power BI, the faster our reports will load. There's a little overkill for this because this report is just like going to be ridiculously fast, but we can add our headers here so we can have profit, revenue, expenses. But it might be cool to have, well, getting the precise shapes on these headers will be difficult. Are these really the same pitch? I guess they must be. Uh, for some reason, they look different to me. Um. I guess so. Okay. Um, it could be cool to do like some color coding or maybe just our uh, fill here. Um, do some variation, but honestly, I think this is probably just fine. Um, so is that enough room for our chart? I think so. So let's go ahead and use this. So what we're going to do here there's lots of approaches to, to printing these out. Um, what I like to do is go into reading mode and then use my whole monitor, which so you can't quite see it clearly. But then I'm going to fire off print screen. It's probably not going to record me taking my screenshot with green shot, but um, I'm going to save to my desktop my screenshot. And then um, in the desktop here, we've got our screenshot, which should have pretty much the right aspect ratios. Um, a little bit of a line on the perimeter, which means I didn't get my screenshot exactly right. But, you know, that's fine for today. 
So let's do this. Page background. Let's add our image from our desktop that we just made here. And let's do fill and kill the transparency. We want to do fit um, like that. Actually, yeah, fit is the best approach. Okay. So now let's create some visuals. We're going to want um, a line chart in this space, in this space, and in this space. And I'm going to pop in here again to zoom in and see if I can better align these. Eh, it's probably close enough. Okay, so let's, we can adjust them more once they have data. So we're going to use, um, our data is all at the year grain, so we're just going to use year as our axis for all of these. Honestly, we should just do one chart, and then once we get the chart right, copy paste it. So this one is profit, so we're going to use profit as our values. Okay. Um... And uh, in Spencer's example, he did revenues, then expenses, then profit. But uh, I think profit should come first. It's most important. So since we've got most of our formatting in our background, we want to turn off a lot of the stuff on this visual. So we're going to turn off the background. We're going to turn off the grid lines. Um, uh, let's see here. Those are in the axes. We're going to also need to make changes to the axes substantially. So let's make this a bit bigger in the recording. Um, so, yeah, colors are terrible. Let's work on that. Um, let's do. Um, a, um, let's look at our data colors. So, red is sort of judgmental. Um, what goes with the theme here? Honestly, like, white is probably the best. And then that's probably the same goes for our labels. So, uh, we don't need to label this because we have a nice clear label here. Uh, in terms of display units, I think we need to go with millions in this case for our axis. Um, and um, let us use clear. I feel like it is still important to have an axis. Um, and one thing Spencer did is he clipped his axes, um, to go from 5 billion to 10 billion for revenue and then have profit be on a separate scale, uh, of, um, we'll have to think about whether we want the scales to align or not. Um, so for now, um... We should also think about display labels. So when I was taught visualization, one of the things I was taught was that if you don't have grid lines with lots of tick marks, which nobody does in, in design these days, but, but our, our chemistry department thought was super important, was you either need to label your points or have a grid where it's easy for someone to infer the points. Um, but... I don't really like, like, uh, how these labels shake out. Like, we could try, like, I want to make them more above, really, is what it comes down to. And unfortunately, Power BI doesn't have that flexibility. So I think we're not going to use data labels. Uh, now, fortunately, we're going to have a chart, a table here, and a chart that actually more explicitly lists out um, all of our values. Uh, and so I don't think it's as important now, what we do need to do is get the color on our 
access here. So that's good. Uh, I feel like that's very clear um, on this background. It's sort of, oh, there's a title on this chart, which we don't want because, again, we have things at the bottom in terms of height here. And then I feel like the correct alignment is actually like inset a little bit like this. And then let's take the same chart and give give it sort of the same. So we have the same, they're a little bit more of a pain to use, but we have the same alignment tools that we have in. Um, so if we do align top and then we can do distribute horizontally and we get everything lined up nicely. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, I feel like, so now we just need to change out these values. Uh, so, um, instead of profit, this one is going to be revenue, and instead of this one is going to be expenses, oh, oh, this one's going to be expenses, um, and so I think, so there's a lot of folks that say, like, if you have charts that you want to compare side by side, you should put them on the same scale. And for revenue and expenses, I think that's probably correct. But profit is just, like, not really supposed to be compared on an absolute basis with revenue and profit. Um, so I don't think that really makes sense. Um, and so um, what we're going to do with our axes... And this is our y-axis. First of all, charts start at zero. I know that's a little bit inconvenient for some. Uh, some of the time, but charts start at zero. And um, unless there's a clear way to indicate otherwise, it doesn't really change the visual, right? Like, it's a steady increase. There's some bumps. I don't think you get any more... Um, clarity for this data out of a chart that doesn't start at zero and you potentially get some confusion so I think charts start at zero but we definitely need to use billions here so then we can go ahead and grab the format painter and apply it here for the same thing except it doesn't auto apply our start point which is uh, not zero our in point is zero because this is negative and we need to do negative Three, ten billion, great, and so we can see how these things are aligned. Um, and now the last thing we need to do is colors. We're not color coding our measures in this design. Could be a good approach, but um, that's not what we're doing. The other thing that I want to do. Let's go back to PowerPoint, because we've got this nice space down here. Is, let's close out of the display view, is maybe we should be labeling. So let's pop back over to the example, Spencer Judd. He's got conference up here on each of the charts. On the one hand, it's like maybe we should have a single conference axis. So maybe... Actually, we don't want to have, um, maybe we don't want to have these boxes at all. Uh, let me just test drive a crazy idea, which is that we have this. Nope. We take this box, we stretch it across. We bring it down and we pop up the corners and then we take this box and we stretch it across and now this box is down here. We pop it up. So we're really not using a tripartite design at all. Um, and, you know, I guess we could consider some sort of design like this where we'd have to radically change so we would do shape fill, like some sort of light background, 
that would let us do more colors in the visual. So like this, and then we would have um, our text. Um, we'd need to set up the text at the bottom. So that's going to be down here. Um, bottom. And then our text color would be probably black and, you know, whatever. We're not going to fiddle with font. Uh, I usually use Sugoi because that's what most of us do. Uh, or like that's the Microsoft design language, but this isn't really a Microsoft product. Um, we, I feel like this needs some transparency or... Um, uh, something. What happens if we give it like 60%? No. 50%? Uh, nope. If we want to do some sort of gradient, we have to like apply the gradient. And we, ca I, we can't really mix flat and not flat elements. I feel like, I feel like if we're going to do, um, oops, uh, something like this, where we put the chart in like a little pop-up, then um, we need to follow this gradient design or ditch it. So um, let's see if we can use a preset gradient. Uh, and Let's, let's look at this gradient. Okay, it's that direction. I don't think he did anything crazy to it. So, but gray just like doesn't have much effect to me. Um, can we do like, ugh, no, no, not at all. Um, I don't think this works. I don't think this works. Let's just delete this. And let's take these and ungroup them. They're no longer grouped the same way. Um, let's just bring this back here. Line it up. Align. Uh, nope. In Power BI, it aligns the objects just based on the one that's furthest in the direction you're going. In PowerPoint, it aligns them based on whichever one you select first is the one that it aligns to, which both are reasonable choices, but it's a little confusing that they're different. Um, so, oops, let's... We don't want that one. We want this. We want to uh, distribute horizontally. And then this one is profit. Uh, so let's save this. I'm going to go back, do a screenshot. And save over our export. And let's go back to Power BI. We'll come in, we'll change our background out to our new version, open, fit, okay. Oh, we've got axis labels, so let's turn off the x-axis labels. We don't need, many labels are important to ax label, many axes are important to label, um, but, uh, Year is not one of them. Showing your units is important, but everybody knows what to, what to do when they see a four-digit number like this that's going up sequentially. Okay, so now that we've done this design, what we're really setting ourselves up for is a table. And, um, oh, we've got a little bit of misalignment down here in this bottom right corner. I don't know if you can see it. Let's, let's go with a zoom it. So we need to go back to PowerPoint and uh, see if we can get this lined up. So you 
Uh, you and you. Align right. Nope. Didn't select the right object. Let's ungroup everything. Okay. No, you and you. Uh, align. Right. Okay. Nope, it's just not big enough. That's the problem. So let's... We can also do this. Um, and uh, I think that told us that it's this is equidistant and centered. Yeah, and so we should actually be aligning to this. So you, same thing, like this, this should float over. Or is it, it's a shadow effect, which now, and then we've also got like these little lines, which we need to kill. I mean, maybe not kill, but yeah. Um, I feel like this group needs to be undone so I can understand what's going on. So I feel like before. Um, that looks better. Uh, I'm still a little confused by what's going on down here. So I think that is what we want. And then we need to move you over to match. And the left side looks good to me. That looks much better. I think we can manage work with that. Uh, so let's go ahead. Wasn't actually planning on spending quite so much time on the design, but it is what it is. The design is not terrible. So just imagine if we'd started from scratch instead of stealing. Okay. Yep. Um, page background. Exit. And honestly, we were going to have to do one more crack at this. But we'll get to why that is in a second. So now, oh, we have this view. And uh, what we're going to do is a breakdown by conferences. So. Spencer was using the conference abbreviations. Um, we could also instead do um, the fully declared vision. I think I think that's what I want to do. Um, and the reason why we're going to have to revise this is now we've got these headers that are going to cause things to not line up. So all of these need to be shifted over. Um, and so we'll do that, but first, turn off our background here. Let's turn off, um, our, I mean, I was planning on putting the conference down here, but also everything in this list explicitly says conference. So we don't actually need the word conference anywhere in our breakdown. Um, so let's see values we've got revenue we've got profit expenses this is the order and then we're actually going to add each one twice because expenses let's go ahead and do values and um can i format the display units i feel like we should be able to here um, I know that's a setting somewhere, I just don't remember where it is. Um, so, um, is there like a per, no, definitely don't want to do that. Um, 
grid general okay so what we want to do is make sure that we only show so let's do it with the format string of the measure typically we wouldn't want to do this in the format string of the main measure in the model because um, you don't want to get like we're making global changes but it is what it is um, so let's see if I can remember how to do it probably tabular editor may have helps for us so let's actually rather than doing that let's hit external tools tabular editor because we want to show these values but they if they're that long like we're not going to have the room that we want um and they're not going to be clear either um so let's look at um the um measure and let's just see if we can remember the format string options does it have built-in options no so this is why we'll just go do things. let's see if we can um, remember how to do a custom format string but the syntax is um, so basically what we want to do is get it to chop off digits so um, there's definitely a way to do that and I don't remember where, what it is. So let's go back to our search and just see. And let's see. See, if we do this approach using DAX, our data type will no longer be um, type number it'll be a text value which will cause problem with the sorting that we want to do um, and so what we want to find is I've done this before I just can't remember what the format string syntax is for um, to get it to do a rounding so um, some of these articles are old. And ah, uh, here we go. This is probably what we want. So Okay, so two adjacent thousand separators uh, means divide the scale by a thousand. So, okay, that's what we want to do. So we can come back to Power BI. We don't actually need tabular editor to do this. Um, we're gonna do dollar sign, um, comma, 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 if we do that, um, we need to put in a digit. Yes. What happens? Yeah. 
just one more digit to support how many there are. Okay. And then what do we do for negative numbers? Because we want this to be formatted. Um, as a negative. We can do that. Ah, there's a syntax. So we can take this comma and that will do for our negatives. Great. Uh, and now we can take this same format and apply it not to profit, but to revenue. This. Um, and uh, revenue looks good. And now let's come over to profit. And for profit, um, again, just like in our axes where we did um, No, we want to do the whole thing in millions. So these are all in millions. So then we want to do add this. Um, so now we have, and uh, I think since it's using low, yeah, it's using uppercase M's here and lowercase. C. This is conflicting because up here we have these millions down there and down here. So what we need to do is go back currency and then make Currency was zero decimals. Yeah. Um, so now that we've done that, um, let's just move ahead with some of the things that we want to do. So we want to have a conditional format. Let's let's do some renaming. So. Name total profit bar. Ooh, that's not what we want. Um, data bars show bar only. And let's see what we get. See, it's syncing these because they have the same name. So we're going to need to make variants of our measures anyway. So that simplifies the formatting problem too. So let's do a new. So what I like to do when I'm going to have sort of s narrow scope measures is make a new table. I know that measure tables aren't always useful, but in this case, um, we're going to call this report scoped measures and blank. So. We're going to have an empty column here, and then in reports, uh, sorry, blank isn't valid, but actually literally writing nothing is. Um, do you show me the DAX for that again? There we go. That, then it works, and then we can make a new measure. Total profit. Billions. Um, and equals total. Um, and then we can do apply our format string here. Can keep doing the same thing. So total profit. Uh, uh, total expenses. Um, 
Give off sense. Missing total revenue. Levels. Total revenue. And hit in our format string, and then we can kill these and have profit revenue profit okay and then reorganize our fields and then now here we can now we can do these as data bars and data bars bar only data bars and uh, the lowest value again should be custom the it should still be zero indexed uh, so let's change this one as well to be zero indexed okay and then Data bars zero indexed okay um and then data bars again uh, y is total expenses oh. Ah, because we want to do this. Okay. Um, and let's have our negative bar be red. Now, next thing to worry about is our um, axis formatting. So let's let's do a couple things. Uh, we let's have our totals land in this bar here. So let's start making our grid bigger. Um, and let's. Um, Um, when we look at values and we do our alternate background, let's have this Let's see if we can let me do transparent. I'm trying to remember where. No fill is on this. Not really. Can we? Oh, well, we don't want banded rows anyway. Um, so let's start playing with our style. Minimal. None. Yeah, that, that's a good start. Now we're getting somewhere. Um, Headers. We're going to turn off all of size column widths because we're going to start playing with those in a second. Um, and none row headers. Outline none. Okay. Now. Let's do, let's bump up the font size a little. Same thing with our headers. Column headers, honestly. Rename for this visual. Honestly, I want to hide them. So let's do our column headers because we've got them up here. 
and we've got the M's, so we don't need those M's. So let's go with white on that. And let's go with none. So now we still need to pad our grid. That's nice. Now we got to keep that below. Now all we need to do is tank. We get a nice alignment. All these. So, um, oh, the other thing we need to do is on subtotals, um, we need to turn um, grand totals. Can we turn them off for, um, yeah, so this is where. We don't want it. We'll just turn off our totals and we'll put card like a card visual down here instead for our totals because one that wasn't in the original requirements that we got from Spencer and two, um, I don't really want to get into how we would get those to some totals not to show up. It's disappointing. It won't do bars for totals in the custom visual, but it is what it is. Um, okay. So now comes the tricky part. This is the part that um, Jeff in New Zealand likes to complain about, which is that we want to get all these column widths to be identical. Uh, and so we also need to adjust our headers. And so we're, instead of using Jeff's technique, which is to laboriously measure with a ruler, we're going to adjust our visual, our background, and then we'll take out part of what we did, which is let's make, let's make a four-part grid. So... Um, Yeah, I don't know exactly um, what widths we want, but if we have you know, yeah, so we need to make all of these slightly longer. Align top, distribute horizontally. Let's make them slightly smaller. And bang this one in and see if that's better. I think that's better. Okay, except actually this first one can be nice and short. What we want is for this. So if I copy this, paste this in to where it lines up height wise I want my first header to extend far enough to cover all of these so let's do that and then let's bring you here now we don't need this anymore um, now these we can arrange Distribute. Let's pop up the width a little. Bang you in. Range, align, distribute horizontally. Great. Let's delete those. You, 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 you. No, we need to select again. group we need to have you selected first because this is PowerPoint not Power BI and then there we go and then this I'm not actually going to use that one at all okay and then the color on this shape fill um, Let's do let's do a different color. 
Let's do say blue. That maybe. Yeah. There we go. So now revenue. Um expenses. Now we've got something that I think is gonna work with our overall design. Um I guess the one thing we want to do is, yeah, get all these spaces the same. That's better. Double check that these are up. Here, right, total. Let's make it black. That will be good. Yeah, I think that's a good option. So, nope, not that view. This view. Let's try this design. Right, yes. Here to our page background one more time. Go total, not super great looking. Okay, so what was I saying we were going to do? Okay is that what we were going to do is use so one more thing we want to add to this design here is a center mark in each of these visuals so what we're going to do is we're going to line the middle of Thing, and it's snapped to the points, and then we can do um, make it point, make it one and a half points, this, and now we will, this way we can preserve scale from element to element using our background. So let's let's go ahead and get this. And before we change it, does the total look right? What's the font here? I think we're mixing fonts. I think that's part of the problem. So um yeah this is all Segoy, this is all Calibri. Let's not do that. Let's come in here and make this all Calibri. Fonts mix. Bump that in. Nah, I think that's going to be better. Okay. Page background, bam, add image. Okay, fit. Oh, we're looking really sharp now. Okay, so we need to make this as big as possible. I'm actually gonna go beyond the recording space on my screen to make it a bit bigger for me. And then hit zoom it even more, which should keep what we're working on. Then we can get this nicely lined up. This is always going to line up with the start of the previous field so that 
this box is always exactly half of the header. And now, Jeff, we have pixel perfect, bar widths, um, in our charts without using a ruler. I mean, we made a digital ruler, but for those of us uh, constantly complaining about that, now we need to make this a bit bigger so that it reaches down here. Okay, so now take this, um, open this up like this here. Back to our design. This. Okay. Now, inch this up a little bit. Nope, we need to make it smaller. So let's come to our grid padding. Let's. Instead of doing that, let's cut down our text size. I don't want to sacrifice any padding. Oh, one thing we can do to reclaim space is just make this super small. I bet there's a minimum size. What is it? Eight. Okay. Now, if we really wanted to go nuts, we could like go hunting for the smallest uh, column size, but uh, I don't want to go that nuts today. Can't do that. So now we've got very nicely aligned, except for I'm not so sure about this one. We dragged it. As much as it'd be nice to put the baseline right there, we did drag it. Uh, we want to get the same pixel widths of the bars, even if it doesn't perfectly line up with our zero point. Um, okay. So we've got a space here. Oh, and then we've got some a little bit of an issue up here. Um, last thing I want to do is I want to add a year slicer. So let's add date to this rather than year. Have this show. And uh, can I have it just show years? Take this and format this as year. Nope, it doesn't do that. Um. So instead of doing date, let's do year. Fix the formatting on our date. That is this. Um, let's switch this year, whole number. We oh I this be able to select between slider? Yeah. Background. Inputs, font color is white. Header, self-explanatory, it doesn't need a header. Bump up the font size a little. Nicely. Yep, we don't want to go into two lines and then slider. We want the slider color white again. Let's again line up from here, here, and then go back to our inputs and back onto one line. 
sort of what we can do is we can select all of these and then do middle. They'll shift down slightly, but we can inch them back up. And this will, they'll all snap to the middle. It does like a relative positioning. Um, and so it mostly centers this relative to those. It's one of the advantages of the uh, approach used by uh, PowerPoint is it's easy to snap something to the middle of something else, whereas here it's a little more complicated. We're almost done. Uh, we don't want this to affect our trends. Instead, um, we want to come into Edit Interactions and change this turn off filtering here um, and then on this similarly I don't want clicking on one chart to filter the other charts um, because these charts just shouldn't be filtered by this stuff at all um, and you you and then you here but whereas if I click on this it should filter the other stuff like so and then this all works nicely okay so we've got our total and then we've got some some little lines to clean up in PowerPoint before we make our final so let's turn off edit interactions stuff gets annoying and Let's make a total card. So the multi-row card is the one we want to use. We could create a card for each one. Oh, uh, not changing our slicer. We could create a card for each one, but in general, cards are slower. So, but we may need to to get the alignment right. Or we may need, you know what we should do, is we should take this table, copy it, delete the header, Bang this down. Do something like this. Um, and probably we'll have to just clear these out. Oh, it probably needs some character, but I don't really know exactly what I want to do. But oh, once again, we want to bar. It's too bad. Oh no, it did preserve my settings. It just assumed oh it won't do them without some dimension that's the problem let's keep them so then this is less interesting to I think the multi-row card might be tough. We'll give it a shot. So in it, what we want to do is pull in our report scoped measures. Um, see if we can get this. So no background, no labels. We have our labels up top. Um, Bar. Okay. Data labels. Let's go to bold and pump up the font. I believe 18 is what this was, but for some reason they're not quite the same. So 
and can't really get the alignment right is the downside it's like close enough to be clear but it's not up to the standards of everything else we've done so far so um let's do this as a card and we don't the card is doesn't need the formatting um total expenses in it Take this down to 18. Better. Let's use our report scope formatting because we have a mismatch in how it's handling. Oops. Oops. Just wants to do it itself in the card. So I guess we'll have to accept the mismatch unless we wanted to. I mean, we could go change our formatting to match this style. But I don't really want to do that. Anyways, total is for extra credit. So, um, revenue, total revenue. Um, total profit. Okay. Alignment. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, let's do one more tweak of our background. And then I think we're ready to say... So one thing I noticed is that in this it was in um Spencer's design he specifically called this the revenue and expenses view so they might have other things on their KPIs that they care about Besides, double space, top. You. Top. Now, group these. Okay. I think this hyphen is not good. Um, so I think we're now ready to ship it. And oh, I did copy the clipboard. So we need to do capture last region, 
Um, jazz. Let's see. A little nervous about that one because it sort of looked like there was. Well, no, it's fine. So let's come into Power BI again and do page background, kill this image here, fit, and this one, oh, everything, everything seems good. Uh, the only thing I don't like is that our zero point on our axis isn't labeled, but it is what it is. The other thing, um, so I think now we're ready to ship this. So uh, I'm going to publish this. I would like to publish to Webit, but I don't think I can do that tonight because MSIT has restrictions on publish to web and I don't have another tenant handy right now. Um, so let's just go ahead and save as week two. To our source control. Did I not? There we go. Week two. In here. So we've got this. This is what we're going to ship. Uh, but let's come back to at the very beginning, we were talking about the differences between creating profit as a column versus just creating it a measure. So let's make, let's duplicate this page. And I'm just going to come in and I'm going to replace profit. It's going to sort of screw up our design, but um, from a computational perspective, it's going to send all the same queries. It's just not going to be quite the same uh, here. So we've got profit now subbed in everywhere we had profit. Uh, so now I'm going to make a new blank page. Um, I'm going to save this. I'm going to close it. I'm going to reopen it on the blank page. This is sort of the standard Power BI performance testing approach. Now week two, or week one, week two. Um, and um, I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna turn on performance analyzer and hit start recording. And we're gonna send page one. And um, so all of this ran in um, not too long. And particularly when we look at our profit by year, we see this visual, the query took 33 milliseconds. And uh, when we look at our matrix, we can see this took 21 milliseconds. Super fast, right? Um, if we close this without saving, reopen it, run the same test on our measure page, we'll see if there's any performance penalty to sort of doing a little adding and subtracting on the fly. The answer, of course, is going to be no. Uh, so let's do performance analyzer, start recording, hit up page two. And the reason we open and close is just Power BI has some caches, and we don't want to hit those caches. So here, the matrix that uses our measure, it ran much faster. And um, our visual, the DAX query ran in less time as well. Not, you know, meaningfully less time. Overall, the page took longer to load, um, but considering we asked it to do different rendering with the same queries, um, whatever. Anyway, these queries are so fast, we don't have a substantial difference between them. Now, this is not a really good test because the models are really small, but who cares? Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to delete this page. Um, I'm going to stop this and I'm going to delete this page here. And um, what we're going to do is we're just going to take this code, sub it back in for total profit, and we're going to get rid of the V2 entirely. And this is what we're going to ship. And um, 
we're going to delete this measure and So the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to see if we can look, take a quick look at what the storage impact, because we made an extra copy of profit when we added that column. So to do that, the best way is using DAX Studio. Um, and with DAX Studio connected to this, we can use view metrics um, and it'll show us the storage cost of each object in it. And so we can see that uh, in this setup, our fact table is 72% of our database. And if we come in and open up and look at the columns in there, uh, well, let's, let's get some zoom in. So the fact table, finances fact, is 72% of the database. And each of our fact columns makes up 3% of that. And um, the same thing is true for total profits. It's 3% of the table because it has the same number of values and everything. Um, and so, you know, it doesn't really matter that because this particular model is quite small. Uh, but if you had, you know, uh, a one gigabyte model or a 10 gigabyte model, a 3% cost is, is not insignificant. Um, and so, I mean, it's not where I would start looking. Now, in the case of this model, like, it's not very complicated. But in general, like, I wouldn't start by looking for 3% savings, but we shouldn't also get in the habit of every time we want to add a new calculation, we pay a 3% penalty to get it. Uh, so um, another way to look at that is right now, this is 565 kil 67 kilobytes on disk. When we come in to transform data and we um, come back to our fact table and we kill this step and uh, we kill this step delete and now we know um, hit close and apply and save um, so now it's 548 so we took 20 kilobytes off which um, you know, five. Okay, so, you know, we shrunk the model by three and a half percent. Even though it said that it was only three percent, less than three percent, the actual storage size is a little bit better than that. So, yeah, don't replicate fact columns. And in a lot of models, you know, you'll have fact columns where they're 20 percent of the database. And um, replicating those columns is super expensive. Uh, so that's the moral of the story there. Um, the other thing we could have done is like make a card visual, but I think that's a bridge too far for today. So let's go ahead and wrap it up. It's been, I don't even know how long, an hour and a half. That's plenty. Thanks for watching uh, and have a good one.